Metropolitan Governance Task Force met this week to continue working on possible reforms to the Metropolitan Council. Where the Met Council acts as an operator for Metro, like Metro Transit, um, and then they act as more of a planning organization. And, and my question is, in the role of planning organization, um, under the current structure, do you feel like you have the authority to manage your county? Do your municipalities feel like they have the account, the authority to manage their growth or lack of growth uh, and development? Or, or do they feel like the Met Council has uh, a, an overrepresentative amount of, of authority? It just doesn't seem to be a balance of what the variety of needs are. And so, do I believe they're heavy handed? Yes, but it's amplified by the resources that then are not provided to support the mandates. I mean, if they're, I have people on tab, I say this all the time. I mean, if you're gonna force us to take all of this new growth, then please at least give us some money for the infrastructure to support it. What do you think of the, of the land use that's occurring uh, you know, in parts of the county, the two acre lot land use and, and the way the Met Council is doing things. Is that a concern, do you think? You know, you said the, the largest growth is in counties outside the Met Council. Should we be thinking about sewers or things, or should we just let, the, let it be the Wild West? I think we still have to look at what the market demands. Uh, the goals are good, but if they are so constrained and so counter to what the market is demanding, you won't achieve your goals. Senator Eric Pratt is a member of the task force, and he now joins me in the studio. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, the Met Council is a regional taxing authority, planning agency, and provider of services like sewage, parks, and transportation in the Twin Cities. Is it fair to say that the size and scope of the council's oversight and power has grown since it was originally created in 1967? Oh, it absolutely has grown. One of our first meetings, we had an overview of the various stages of Met Council over time. As an advisory committee, as more of a oversight uh, body, and finally in 1994, actually becoming an operator of certain systems. And so uh, the Met Council's uh, scope and authority has grown over the years. And the governance model has not kept up with that. It's a great question because not only are we looking at the structure of the Met Council, but we're looking at whether or not the scope of the Met Council is appropriate as well. And, and that's actually one of the areas I'm most interested in. And this region has changed significantly since 1967. It's changed tremendously since 1967. And um, you know, one of the things I would say that, you know, there's always been this debate of whether or not we should have a Metropolitan Council or regional government. And I think it's become clear that in some cases it works very well, and maybe in other, in other situations it doesn't. And that's why I'm interested to see and continue the conversation about what should the scope of the Met Council be. Thousands of bills have been introduced over the years that would make changes to the Met Council. In fact, in 2018, you were the chief author of a bipartisan bill that would have removed gubernatorial appointments, staggered terms, increased the size of the council, and eliminated the Transportation Advisory Board. Governor Dayton vetoed the bill. If that bill had become law, what do you think its impact may have been? You know, I think the impact would have been we'd had a more accountable Met Council. That's one of the complaints that we continue to hear around the representation we have today is that the Met Council is accountable to the, gov to the governor and not to the communities that it serves. And by having locally elected officials on the Met Council, I think we wouldn't be addressing some of these issues. Um, I think we'd have had better oversight over the Southwest light rail construction because it's the cities along that line that would have had a voice at the table, not somebody appointed by the governor. Not only have many bills been introduced, but many task forces, blue ribbon panels, and studies have been conducted over the years. This task force uh, recommendations will be due prior to the 2024 legislative session. You don't have a lot of time. Will this work lead to change or is it just another study? Well, I certainly hope it leads to change. Um, there's a lot of energy, there's a lot of agreement that we'd like to see change. Um, we haven't really dug into what type of change um, we'll be recommending. There's a couple of different ideas, one around having a direct election of Metropolitan Council members 
uh, as you mentioned, the other idea is looking at more of a council of governments, um, much like the Denver area has. Um, we have to look at all the various aspects of the Metropolitan Council. Is it going to be a planning organization? Is it going to be an operations organization? Uh, should it continue as our Metropolitan Planning Organization for federal funds? All of these come into play, but even as you listen to the committee hearings, you're hearing about some of the uh, frustration in how resources are being allocated. We had a discussion today uh, how uh, we were allocating funds to housing that were more expensive than it would have been had we put them in another area. And yet the Met Council funded the more expensive uh, project. And so looking at it and making sure that we have a body that is truly representative of the region and truly representative of the communities within the region, I think are going to be crucial. And then as I mentioned before, what's the appropriate scope? Should there be some functions that we put inside the Met Council that need to be moved into other areas. Multiple lawmakers from both sides of the aisle have said, as you just as you just indicated, the Met Council needs to be more accountable and it needs to provide more transparency. So Senate Transportation Chair Scott Dibble's bill to make the Met Council an elected body rather than how it is currently uh, cons uh, constituted is what resulted in this task force in the first place, in part because city mayors objected to, to that. Minnetonka Mayor Brad Wearsom feared that an elected body could become paralyzed and fractured. Is that a valid concern if everyone is elected that it could just get mired in politics? Well, I, that is a big concern, is, is especially in today's political realm. Uh, we become more divided. We become uh, we're, we're going into our own camps and and a couple of my fears and, and Representative Kozik has brought this up a couple of times how much money goes into an election say in Portland where they do the, the direct election we're talking two hundred and fifty thousand dollar campaigns uh, who's going to be backing those campaigns we've seen uh, politicization of non partisan races in school boards and city councils already not just in Minneapolis, but now out in the suburbs as well. Um, we want a Met Council that is not focused on politics, that's focused on the needs of the region and the needs of our community. While it is true that the handling of the Southwest Light Rail project has been the impetus for taking another look at the Metropolitan Council, it's also true that in 2016, the Met Transit was honored Metro Transit was honored as the transit system of the year by the American Public Transportation Association. So did something change from 2016 to the present? I don't think so. Um, there, have been, there, I, there have been some changes, I think, more societally as we've seen uh, more violence on some of our uh, Metro Transit lines, particularly, you know, we've had um, uh, drivers of, 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 the, of the light rail talk to us about the things that they encounter every day and bus drivers who are being attacked. Those are things that you didn't hear about 10 years ago. Um, and that's not to say that it's not operating well, but one of my concerns is does the Met Council, as the Metropolitan Planning Organization that gets federal funding and decides which projects are a priority, and being the operator of metropolitan transit cause a conflict of interest to where more money is going into those projects versus as representative, former representative, now Commissioner Holberg talked about today, making sure we have the infrastructure to manage the growth. Uh, finally, what is the ideal mix in your view? Is it a combination of elected and appointed officials? Do you already know kind of what you want to see or are you just really keeping an open mind as this uh, task force continues to work. I'm really trying to keep an open mind. I'm trying to listen to all, uh, to all sides. I mean, certainly, um, I had the bill in 2018, and and uh, when you have a bill of that magnitude, um, you become very passionate about it. And so I'll admit that I came into this task force with a bias, but I'm also trying to stay open, knowing that if we are really going to make an effective change, we're going to have to find some level of compromise along the way. Senator Eric Pratt, it's always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.